Welcome to another video from Ski Boat Parts Online.com, where our passion is keeping older ski boats on the water. We produce these videos to help you, our customer. Welcome back to another video from Ski Boat Parts Online.com. My name is Ron, and today we're going to do part two of our trailer brake uh, service. Part one, we did uh, rebuilding of the actuator, the actuator up front. Uh, there's basically again there's three sections to trailer brakes on a ski boat you have the actuator up front you have the line set in between the actuator and the wheels so the line set would be section two and section three is going to be your actual wheel cylinders or wheel uh, brake assemblies uh, again you have uh, drum brakes and disc brakes on the older ski boats you're typically going to find drum brakes and drum brakes come in basically two different sizes 10 inch and 12 inch uh, general rule if you've got a five lug uh, uh, drum it's going to be a 10 inch but you can measure that it's not difficult the six lug uh, hubs typically are a 12 inch again you can measure that on this particular trailer this is a boat that we picked up a few weeks back and we had to uh, drive it about 500 miles to get it back here and uh, we did the real basic uh, trailer uh, maintenance before we left. We, uh, we actually changed the tires because they were nearly 20 years old and we lifted each wheel up, spun the bearings, they didn't sound like a gravel truck inside so we added some grease to them and crossed our fingers and drug it home without any incident. But on this one we did notice that the one drum on one side was new. Yeah, why did they change it? The brakes still don't work on this trailer, they didn't work coming home so there's a mystery here that we're going to try to find out what, uh, why this drum is brand new. So with that we're going to start uh, taking this apart. Okay, one question before we even get too far along. I do get the question when a trailer has a bearing buddy style uh, grease cap, how do I remove it? Uh, they don't see an obvious nut. So this is a, uh, a grease protector, but pull that off. And the way you remove that is <clears throat> pretty simple. Take your favorite mallet, kind of tap going out while you rotate the wheel, and you'll see it start walking off of there. And when it gets near the end, it should pop right off. So we'll set that off to the side. Have plenty of paper towel ready because this is going to be a greasy mess. Now, for some of you guys that are really sharp, you're going to notice that this. Uh, trailer has two methods of greasing. There's a grease fitting in here and the bearing buddy also has a grease fitting. This particular axle style uh, has a grease fitting and the spindle is bored all the way to nearly the end and just ahead of the inner grease seal there is a hole so as you <coughs> inject grease here it comes out the hole and comes back through the bearings and when you see grease reappearing right here you know that you have uh, completely filled the hub with grease to where it comes out this area. We'll show you that when we put it back together. <coughs> uh, the downside to that system is when you have a warm trailer axle going down the highway they get warm now you put it in the lake you launch the boat you quench the hub and that grease will contract and as it contracts it draws water in wherever it can uh, and so now you're introducing water in there so on this particular setup we have uh, redundant or dual grease methods we have this method for grease in the hub but then the bearing buddy cap also keeps uh, water out it has a spring loaded plunger in the uh, on the back side here and as you add grease the spring loaded plunger will come out and as you quench it in the, in the water all of a sudden that uh, plunger will go in and keep water out of the hub. So let's uh, get ready to take this apart. Okay the first thing I want to point out on this axle this is a little unique most all of your spindles are going to have an, a hole bored through it for your cotter pin. This particular brand has a slot across the top uh, you don't see that real often, but you'll need to straighten the cotter pin out and pull this cotter pin out of there. 
in my experiences these are actually more difficult to remove than the standard ones. So let's pull. Alright, we got it out. Now you can take your axle nut off. And it's probably or should be finger tight. Um, if you need to use a channel lock, go ahead. Pull the axle nut off, set it up to the side. Next comes your flat washer. You may need to pull the drum back a little bit to get it to come off. Set it off to the side. Then comes your, your outer bearing. We're going to set him off to the side. And then the drum comes straight off. Okay, now we have our first uh, answer to one of our mysteries. Why did this trailer come in with a brand new drum on it? What we should be seeing here are brake shoes and springs. They're not present. So my guess is at some point in this trailer's life, the uh, brakes became engaged and did not disengage. Probably because there was too much debris, rust, and crud in the brake lines. And so my guess is that once the shoes expanded and were pressing against the drums, uh, they got hot and uh, the drum was probably discolored so whoever services okay we're going to put new drums on and we're going to just take all these brake parts off and let her roll without brakes uh, so what you want to do always but especially in this case is inspect the spindle for damage and this one looks okay i'll double check that with a uh, set of bearing races to make sure they slide on there nice but here's a good uh, time to point this out. This is the wheel cylinder. Now like the uh, actuator, the actuator had a cast iron master cylinder. Cast iron, when you get moisture in it, develops rust. This is the same story with these wheel cylinders. This is cast iron. And I'm sure inside it's nasty and full of rust. Um, so you could replace that with the newer uh, aluminum wheel cylinders. But in this case, we need the missing parts. So what we're going to do on this trailer is put in a new brake assembly kit. Both sides, they come in a kit, the backing plate, a new aluminum wheel cylinders, new shoes, and new stainless steel springs. So we're going to go take a look at those parts next. All right, this is the uh, brake assembly that came off of the left side. It had the shoes in place, uh, but again, it had the rusty uh, steel uh, brake wheel cylinder, the rusty springs. Again, here is the brake adjuster that we're going to get to after we bleed the brakes. Okay, this is a replacement 10-inch uh, trailer brake kit. Uh, what it's going to come with is the backing plate, the shoes, uh, and all the springs. Now one thing of note is the wheel cylinders are aluminum. They're not going to rust inside and the springs on the replacement kits are stainless springs. That's cool. Uh, it also comes with the bolts, uh, to, new bolts to bolt it on. Now uh, you're going to see in a minute uh, these are not difficult to do. You have a brake line that goes into here. You disconnect the brake line and there are four bolts that hold this assembly onto the axle. Uh, this is your bleeder up here. That rubber plug comes off and this will be our, your bleed screw. Now, let me sh show you the real uh, key. There is a right and a left side. Obviously this one's got an R marked on it for right, but the easy way to tell is the wheel cylinder always points forward. This one is pointed back. This is going to go on the left side. This is going to go on the right side. One's marked L, one's marked R. But the easy way to tell is the positioning of the wheel cylinder. If you pull one of these hubs off or the drums off and you see that this is pointed the wrong way, somebody didn't know what they were doing when they put it together always points to the front. Uh, a, a little difference between the trailer version and an automobile version. Again, we haven't used drum brakes in cars in a long time. 
but on a car you would have a piston that comes out both sides pushing against the back drum and the front drum on a marine application we only use one we call that a free backing uh, drum brake assembly and what happens is when the trailer is moving forward and you apply brakes by compressing the actuator sending hydraulic fluid or brake fluid into this piston it's going to push this shoe against the drum uh, the back set of drums or shoes do very little on a, on a boat trailer so when you're backing your trailer up and the motion is now going this way and you hit your brakes uh, there's nothing pushing against this shoe. It does very little. That's called a free backing system. It's a little bit different than the, uh, the automobile versions. Now, something else I want to point out. This is your uh, adjuster. This is what adjusts the shoes. This is what adjusts your brakes. The, uh, this little star here, there is a rubber plug on the back side that you pull the plug out and you stick a, either a wide screwdriver or a brake adjusting tool and you're rotating this. Now here's another difference between marine versions and automobile versions. On an automobile you would typically have a little lever that comes against here and every time you hit your brakes going backwards it adjusts your brakes. They're self-adjusting. Boat trailers are not self-adjusting brakes. So periodically you need to go underneath the trailer and adjust this and we'll have to do that when we install these uh, because right now they're going to be uh, on the on the kind of the, the, the tight side or squeezed in to help make it assemble easier but we're going to need to pull these out so that you just barely hear these shoes rubbing against the drum so there is our new brake kit so let's get to it and install these bad boys Okay, we mentioned uh, brake line sets or brake line kits. Uh, the boat that we're working on today, the trailer we're working on today, did not need replacement brake lines. They were fine. But if you've got the steel brake lines that are, uh, the, the fittings won't come undone or they just crumble in your hands, you need a new brake line set. Um, I prefer the new DOT rubber or plastic brake lines. Uh, they're both variations are out there. Uh, because they don't rust. Um, but this is a typical single axle brake line set kit. Uh, it's going to come with your main uh, line that's going to come from the actuator back to the axle. It's going to come with an axle crossover hose and your two wheel cylinder hoses all with the uh, brass fittings on there. Now one thing of note uh, with this line set, either the plastic or the rubber, uh, you cannot cut and trim these. If you have excess line, which you typically do, you simply coil that up and zip tie it in place. You're not going to uh, cut and trim these lines like you can with a steel line set. The kit's going to come with your, uh, your brass tees. Uh, there's a couple different configurations. You can plumb this. Uh, a, uh, this trailer that we worked on today is a uh, uh, torsion axle. Uh, so the plumbing's a little different on a torsion axle. Uh, if you have leaf springs, uh, then you'll probably use the extra T that's here in the plug. Uh, but the instructions show you how to do that. Uh, it comes with the stainless steel brackets and some zip ties and screws. So that's what comes in a brake line kit. Okay, here's our brake line coming back from the actuator. Coming to a T. This is a real common setup on a single axle trailer with brakes. Um, here's your line that's going to the left side and here's our line going to the right side. Now like I did in the front. Overnight I soaked these fittings down with my favorite penetrating oil and we're going to see if, they, if these break loose then we're golden. We don't have to replace these lines. I'm going to back this up. Okay. There's one loose. Any trading oil work will did its job. If they don't come loose, I wouldn't spend a lot of time fighting them. Just replace it with the new plastic line set. Okay, now we got to pull this apart. 
Another one of those spring clips like we had in the front. Pull him down. All right, we're gonna have to pull this fitting off. So we're gonna need a couple more tools. Let's see here. We have this one. Actually, this just has to turn. Let's see if we'll turn it up here. Okay. Again, I soaked all these down overnight. Yeah, it's going to be easier to pull this T off. So, let's see. Yeah, this is a... We need a five eighths. And this is not the correct one, but let's see if it'll go. Yeah. Okay, now we can turn this brake line off. good news is I see pretty clear brake fluid coming out on the ground because we're going to clean these up and blow all these lines out okay now there are four bolts that hold this assembly on that's next is removing those four bolts the lower ones are the easy ones so I'm going to go to the most, the most difficult bolt is the one right behind the uh, wheel cylinder. We're going to get the difficult one next. In this, uh, on this one, it's five eighths wrenches front and back, and that takes out the backing plate. And there is the old one. Now, adding brakes to a trailer, as long as your trailer axle has the backing plate with the four bolts in it, uh, you can always add brakes to a trailer. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take a break, and I'm going to do the other side. Okay, now I'm just going to blow air pressure oh, okay here's our new wheel assembly again the piston is pointing forward and we get a bolt in the two bottom holes just to Hold it there.
Okay, our backing plate is bolted up. The uh, flex line that connects to it, I've inspected it. There's no cracking, no drywall. It's still very pliable and flexible. That's good. And we've taken and cleaned the ends up and blown any debris that's in it out. So this is a good, clean line. Uh, now, bear in mind, these are all com are, uh, flare fittings. So you do not need any kind of uh, thread tape or thread compound. It's a... Uh, uh, get this started here. Flare fittings do not use any kind of thread sealant. There we go. And this one gets tight. Okay, and the heat comes back, and our spring clip goes back on. Okay, next is our T fitting. size wrench for that. Okay, once I get this tight, um, we still need to do the other side and blow the other side line out. We don't want to uh, cross-contaminate any of these things. Uh, okay, let me get a wrench to tighten this and I'll be right back. Okay, we've blown out this crossover line already. Okay. Snug. Okay, Okay. all the brake lines on the right side are in and done. Then I'm going to take a break and I'm going to go complete the other side. Okay, remember I said that this has a grease fitting on the end of this spindle. There's a hole board. Here is a hole that the grease comes out of. Now this surface behind the hole is the surface that the inner seal rides on. So you want to make sure that's nice and smooth all the way around and no burrs or cuts or nicks in it. This is the surface that the inner bearing rides on. Now we had this treader at one time had some problems. So I had to do, take some sand cloth and clean that up. But you can take a bearing. Now this is the bearing out of the other side. Make sure this slides on and off easy. It didn't want to when I started this. There were some burrs on the spindle. So now the race or the bearing will slide on easy. Same thing with the outer bearing. You want to make sure it goes on nice and easy over this part of the spindle. Now we didn't film the other side, but on the other side, this is where the bearings came out of that drum. And uh, the inner or outer bearing was okay. The inner bearing's got some trouble, so we're going to be replacing that. But we're going to actually do bearing service on another video. Uh, this one's long enough. So this is cleaned up and serviceable and ready to be put back together. All right, we want to preload this nut and 
set those bearings in there. You kind of do it. It's already locked, trying to tighten up. You hear the noise of the brake shoes dragging. You don't want to confuse that with bearings. So, what I'm going to do is probably put about 30, 40 pounds of torque on here. This thing is not going to want to roll, and then back it off until the drum rolls again. And that sets those bearings up. I like to loosen up just a little bit so she spins free. And that's where you can find a spot where your cotter pin will either drop through the spindle or go across in this case. We're going to put the cotter pin in next. And I don't like this style. Alright, I need to get my... You want to make sure that your cotter pin is not going to interfere with your bearing cap going over it. So we're in there. Now the next thing I want to show you is how this style spindle works. It'll take some grease, but you're going to see it come out. Okay, here she comes. Nice clean grease coming through. All right, we can stop there, and then the bearing buddy is going to do the rest. Okay, now it's time to put our uh, bearing cap back on. This is our bearing buddy knockoff. We're going to put a little block of wood there to get these started. It can be a little cantankerous, a little tough to get going. There we go. Let me finish it off. Yeah, I think we're there. Now, the next question I see, or issue I see with bearings, or bearing caps, is our customers tend to overfill them. There's a fine line between overfilling and underfilling. This particular style has a small hole right here. So if you overfill this one, it's going to pee out this little hole. But the trick is, insert your grease gun. And as soon as I see the plunger begin to move out is when I stop. Got some leakage there. And there we go. She's starting to move. Let me take this off. Maybe we can see. The grease fitting is on this plunger, and as soon as this plunger starts coming out against the spring pressure, that's when you stop. If you keep going, this particular one has a relief hole. Not all of them have relief holes. So you want to stop as soon as you see that move, and you're, you're done. Okay, this is the last part of the job uh, for our brakes, and that's bleeding the brakes. I'm going to show you how I do it, how you can do it by yourself, uh, both of the right and left. Uh, drum brake assemblies have been uh, completely uh, reassembled and put back together. Uh, if you are wondering about the uh, wheel bearing service, that's going to be a whole other video. Um, so we'll deal with that at a different time. But both of the uh, right and left side are put back together. Uh, so now it's time our brake lines are completely cleaned out. They've been uh, blown out. And one of the things I like to do, <clears throat> and this is going to be hard to see on the camera, but I like to lower the tongue, elevate the back if you can, to force your hydraulic fluid or brake fluid to go uphill. You've got a little better chance of getting it uh, uh, air free, no air bubbles in it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add brake fluid to the reservoir. Bring it right up to the top. <clears throat> now, there is a way of taking a screwdriver below and pumping the brakes if you would, um, but that requires two people to bleed the brakes using that method. You can uh, do it by yourself. 
Now this particular winch has a uh, decorative cover over it so this winch is not going to work for me but uh, if you didn't have this decorative cover on here you could use this winch uh, disconnected from the boat, wrap it around the tongue and back to a stationary object and simply wind the winch up compressing the tongue. So we don't want to disturb that so I've got a ratchet strap here that we're going to uh, use a ratchet strap. <clears throat> It's going uh, around the front of the tongue. I've got it clipped on the bottom. Let's see. Yep, she's down there. And all I'm going to do is tighten the ratchet up. And what it's going to do, it's going to compress the tongue until it comes to a stop. And then I'm going to go to the, I'm going to do one wheel at a time. I'm going to do the wheel that starts with the shortest uh, line, which is going to be the right side, the one we did all our film work on. And I'm going to take the little bleeder screw, and we're going to try to get the camera in there to show you uh, how you bleed this. There's brake pressure on it, but that line is full of air, so we need to bleed the air out. Okay, it's going to be easier to show you uh, the bleed port on this old brake assembly. Uh, your brake line is... Uh, coming out uh, right here but this is a bleed port right here this is going to be uh, off you're going to need a 3-8 wrench okay. she's going to be closed when you get it and when you have the uh, brake pressure on we're going to crack this open you'll hear a little little tiny wisp of air or fluid and then you close it you open it and then close it it's going to be hard to shoot this so we'll try it Okay, this is a brake adjuster tool. You can also use a flat screwdriver. They both work. Pressure on. And I you spin open the, the wheel. Uh, bleed valve. Then close the and bleed. And start screw, rotating the. Then go back up front and reposition star it down. And do it all over. Till I hear. Do this several times. Brake starting to drag. There she get some drag. One little click at a time. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but she got drag all the way around, so I'm going to back it off. Two clicks. Now it's an occasional drag. And that's where we're going to leave it. Put the little rubber plug back in. do a road test and then check them again okay I think we're just about done here the uh, brakes have been bled now by the way I had to reload this master cylinder six times uh, you don't want it to run dry then you have to start over and it took quite a while for this thing to bleed uh, what I did was I compressed this probably 15 times before I had uh, good um, hydraulic fluid or brake fluid squirting out the bleeder uh, and you'd see, you'll, I put a mirror up there so I could watch it. If you do it uh, with the wheels off, you can reach behind and you don't have to crawl underneath the trailer all the time. Uh, so that worked out pretty well. It just took quite a while. So both sides have been bled. Both sides have been uh, adjusted so that you, you just start to feel and hear some, uh, some brake shoe drag on there. And the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to apply some pressure. And I'll, my assistant over here is going to start rotating the wheel back there, which you can't see, so spin the wheel. And I'm going to start putting some brake pressure, and you tell me when it gets hard to... It, it's there, it just came to a stop. That wheel came to a dead stop, and we're just barely moving this back. So uh, we're going to call this good. Uh, next would be a road test, which we're not going to video, but uh, once you drive the trailer, or pull the trailer. You're not going to drive the trailer. You're going to pull the truck. Pull in the trailer. Once you do that for uh, a trip or two, you'll probably need to readjust the brakes. 
uh, because they're going to seat and they're going to find where they need to be and they're going to be uh, a little bit loose again. So adjusting trailer brakes is at least a once a year ordeal. You want to make sure your fluid is topped off. I've already got the rubber cap back on it. Now we can put our uh, lockout cap on and take this trailer down off of the jack stands and we're finished with the brake work. Thanks for watching this video from SkiBoatPartsOnline.com. My name is Ron and we appreciate you watching our videos. If you like these, hit the like button. And if you want to see more of them, hit the subscribe button. Thank you and have a great week boating.